Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Devo with Bowo. I'm your host, Bo Willette. Super excited to be here to get in the word with you. And we are today, this morning, what is it, October 5th. We are in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 14. And this is a big chapter, a long chapter. You could always check out the archives of the devotions just by going to my YouTube site, Bo Willette. But uh, if you're in Samuel um, and you get to this chapter, it's kind of a father-son chapter. So it's kind of this chapter that revolves around uh, Jonathan. We got introduced to this this son of Saul, Jonathan. And uh, now we kind of get into his military uh, kind of battles, situations, and we also see it contrasted by his old man uh you know his pop and um and it so it's kind of a a tale of a lot of lives in the sense that you know the the kids aren't kind of like the dad in some ways and we see this over and over right in in uh the bible we see that you know you might have a good priest but then you have the sons that aren't so good you know and here you have another chapter where you have a uh, a very, um, you know, famous father, but, and, and he's just a, really a wreck of a guy in a lot of ways. He's got a lot of, um, kind of compromise in his life. And then, you know, you have his son who, who is really spot on and, and their relationship, uh, isn't that, that great. So, um, you know, it's a, it's definitely, I don't know what your background is or what, who your parents are, what they're like, or, but I think everybody can look at their lives and kind of go, hmm, you know, maybe, you know, like, I don't want to be like that. Or, and maybe that's how Jonathan was, is, hey, I just don't want to be like my dad. And, and that's not, that's a bummer when, you know, you say it like that, right? Like, God, I don't want to be like my dad. It sounds so rough and kind of harsh and, not very sensitive, but I think, I think uh, in our lives, um, some of us have had to say that at times, you know, like, gosh, I don't want to be like this person that happens to be someone in your family. Um, so it's a very relevant chapter. And of course it's going to go through a bunch of military stuff. I mean, now it happened one day that Jonathan, the son of Saul said to the young man who bore his armor, come, let us go over to the Philistine garrison that is on the other side. So I love in this, I think of this in the devotion is that, you know, am I willing to go over on the other side? Just that alone, like how that applies to my life. Am I willing to go Am I, you know, Jesus said what? Go and make disciples. You know, am I willing to do that? Is that something that's open in my life? Am I, uh, or is it very difficult for me to do that? Is it, am I, am I like, "Mm, no, I'm kind of good with just being complacent. You know, we, we won a battle not too long ago, you know, like, Hey, I'm cool with that. You know, I've done my duty. That's it. Or do I go? Today is another day for me. Am I going to go? Am I going to face challenges? Um, you know, or do I just want kind of that kickback thing? You know, where it's like, hey, I just want, you know, I don't want, I want a day with no conflict. I mean, I might like that, but I don't know if that's really a real kind of thing. <laughs> you know, there's always conflict, if not on the outward right? There's always conflict that could be on the inward, meaning I'm always having to deal with stuff, resist certain urges, deal with things. I can't ever just kick back. Um, you know, I want there at the end of my life, you know, when I, when I, when the body dies, I want there to be peace and I want there to be serenity. Um, but that's why we kind of do it now. We go to the other side. We kind of have that conflict now so that we can find serenity, right? Um, yeah, you can find peace. Usually it's after the battle that peace comes, right? Yeah, you can't have peace um, without kind of a battle, you know? Um, P. 
peace wouldn't be peace if there was no battle, right? <laughs> um, Tina says, you don't want to hurt people like that, hurt us, but forgive them. That's right. We got to learn to forgive, right? And that's the, um, the important part. But I love that. Go to the other side, right? Let's go to the, let's go where the Philistines are. Let's go over there. You know, hey, who knows what God's going to do? You know, uh, you never know, you know, um, you know, um, go to that place, you know, take a brother, you know, I love it. They go in twos, right? That's kind of cool too. It's Jonathan is and his armor bear and they go in twos and they go to that per- place. And it says, and Saul was sitting in the outskirts of Gebeah under the pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. So he's kicking back. And it says the people who were with him were about 600 men. So he had his kind of military escort, if you will. And Ahijad, the son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli. So the reason why it gave us all those names is just to show us where this person's from that's being mentioned. And they are from the priestly family, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh. So this is the priest now. Uh, was wearing an ephod. That's what priests did. They wore this kind of clothing garb. And it says, but the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. So Jonathan kind of went in stealth. I think his dad's kicking back, kind of enjoying the the previous victory. And Jonathan's like that dude where he's like, man, our enemy's right over there. Like, maybe we just got to get over there. Now notice what Jonathan says. He says, Between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistine garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of one was Boses, and the name of the other was Sina. The front of one faced northward, opposite of Michmash, and the other southward, opposite Gebeah. Okay, so you have Gebeah is where Saul's at. Michmash was where the Philistines were at. And uh, then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. Hey, you know, isn't that interesting? It's like, I think David's going to say this later on, a very similar thing, the uncircumcised Philistines, right? Maybe he got that from Jonathan, huh? Or maybe that's just how they spoke about the Philistines. And... um, and uh, let's see, where am I at? And it says, it may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. Man, really cool. By the way, in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse, I think, 27, you get a real interesting verse that is spoken through the prophet of Israel, Ezekiel, hundreds of years after this time that give a kind of breakdown of Israel's idolatry, even during this time, that Israel was really worse off, it says, than even the Philistines. And that is a mighty statement, right? So I don't want us to ever think that Israel's got it all together. Man, they do not got it all together. They are incredibly in some rough spots, you know, so he, I love what Jonathan says, though, don't you? Um, you know, and that is that idea of come, let us go over to the garrison of the uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will save, right, by many or by few. Hey, what, what, if, what is God going to do? Have you ever been excited about things like that, like in your walk with God? Hey, what is God going to do? You know, how is this going to work? You know? You know, how's God going to move? You know, that that kind of anticipation. Um, I think that's just so cool, right? Hey, you never know what God's going to do. You know, go to that swap meet outreach. Go to that. Go speak to that person. You know, be praying for an opportunity in your neighborhood to share Christ. Maybe invite someone to, you know, the up and coming harvest festival or, or, you know, get someone involved. You know, maybe make a little flyer and pass it around. You know, you never know if God's going to save by many or by few. I love that. So his armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. I love that. A good, a good, you know, assistant, a good helper, you know, just says, hey, encourage right on, man. You want to, you want to go for it, man, I'm with you. And so go then here I am with you according to your heart. 
Oh man, good partnerships are so important. You know, do I allow, um, do I make for a good partner uh, in my life? Am I easy to get along with? Do I speak kindly to people? Do I submit to people? Do I know how to come underneath people and listen to them and love them? Or are my words sharp and harsh where I can't have a partner in ministry because I'm just not nice? Hmm. You know, you got to look at, we got to look at ourselves, right? To see how am I acting? And then Jonathan said, very well, let us cross over to these men and we will show ourselves to them. So we're going to make ourselves known to the Philistines. Sounds pretty crazy, actually, right? And it says, and if they say to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and we will not go up to them. But if they say, come up to us, then we will go up for the Lord has delivered them into our hand and this will be a sign to us. Okay, so... He's got a little sign thing going, like if this happens, I, 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 I know the Lord's with us and we're going to go and we're going to take it. And so sure enough, this is what happens. The Philistines say, hey, there's the enemy, you know, come on up to us. They shout to him, right? And, uh, and, and they call to Jonathan, it says, come up to us and we will show you something. And Jonathan sent to his ar- armor bearer, aha, come up after me. For the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan's confidence is super sky high. And it's amazing what we can do off of confidence. I mean, it really is. When you're confident about something, man, you really can achieve amazing goals. And isn't it amazing how people, you know, play sports so good, you know, so well, or they dance amazing or they play an instrument absolutely unreal or they you know paint or they you know create art on blankets or you know uh, they can make couches they could you know people are you know they're woodworkers there's metal workers there's people that put together cars and refurbish them there's people that build homes and bathrooms sometimes i go into people's homes and i'm like blown away at their kitchens i'm like man your kitchen is like super amazing like that's a nice kitchen like you know like someone took time and you know, mine's from 1965. I think the countertop is the original, man. It's like super yellow, you know. Um, I still have popcorn ceilings. <laughs> yeah, you know, obviously I'm not a very art, uh, I'm not very construction oriented, you know. My confidence level when it comes to doing things like that is super low. Just don't have much confidence in my ability, right? It's because I've never learned the skills too well. So I always do things and make mistakes and mess up and it makes it worse, you know, and um, yeah. But man, Jonathan hears this, says the Lord is with me and his confidence is soaring. And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and knees with his armor bearer after him. They climb up, they fell before, um, and it says they fell before Jonathan and he came after him. His armor bearer killed them. That first slaughter, which Jonathan and his armor bearer made, was about 20 men within about half an acre of land. So just in a small little area, they take out 20 of the Philistines in kind of this, it sounds pretty, uh, not so much hand-to-hand combat, but, you know, very close combat, right? You had Jonathan in the front, you had his armor bearer in the rear, and they are just going at it together. Yeah, ministering together, right? Yeah, you know, having that partnership, you know, and I, I just enjoy that. I think that's so important. Again, it challenges me to see where I'm at and how my heart is. And if I'm a good person to for people to come and talk to, uh, am I am I um, am I good with people, you know, and there was trembling in the camp, in the field and among all the people, the garrison and the raiders also trembled and the earth quaked so that it was very great trembling. Woo, so they had an earthquake, people freaking out. Now the watchmen of Saul and Gebeah of Benjamin looked 
and there was a multitude melting away, and they went here and there. And Saul said to the people who were with him, Now call the roll and see who has gone from us. And when they had called the roll, surprisingly, Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. Now I was in, in a big earthquake. And when earthquakes happen that are really big and violent and people die and, you know, that kind of earthquake, a national, uh, a natural disaster, you know, you got to do a roll call, right? And they do the roll call and they find that Jonathan and the armor bearer aren't there. And Saul said to Ahijah, bring the ark of God here. For at that time, the ark of God was with the children of Israel. And now it happened while Saul talked to the priests that the noise which was in the camp of the Philistines continued to increase. So Saul said to the priest, withdraw your hand. Then Saul and all the people who were with him assembled and they went to the battle. And indeed, every man's sword was against his neighbor and there was very great confusion. So the Philistines are... In a sense, um, God is doing a work <laughs> to confuse them, and they're literally killing themselves. And uh, boy, you know, sometimes when we put ourselves in that place of being an enemy of God, we can become very confused, right? You know, there's one thing I always have to remember, and that is, I'm not God. And... And it's best to work alongside with God and humble myself to God instead of trying to fight God. And so many, so much of my time, I remember just being younger, was spent just trying to fight God. You know, it's not that I, it's not that there wasn't intellectual reasons um, to not believe in God that I was holding on to. It was just that I didn't want to submit to God. You know, and it led me into many things that a lot of confusion in life. So moreover, the Hebrews who were with the Philistines before that time, who went up with them to the into the camp from the surrounding country, they also joined the Israelites who were with Saul and Jonathan. And it says, likewise, all the men of Israel who had hidden in the mountains of Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, they also followed hard after them in battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle shifted to Beth Aved. Okay, so we'll stop there. It's a long chapter, and we'll kind of go into some other things later on. Um, but it talks about how all Israel now hear what's going on, and they all kind of jump in and join. And, you know, it's kind of interesting, but there's... um. There's something that, like, when you're around someone with confidence, like a Jonathan, like his armor bear, you know, there's there becomes like a, a, uh, uh, it's or let me say it this way, it's fun to be around those kind of people. Um, you kind of ride some of their confidence, don't you? You know, you kind of go, hey man, that person's confident, and they're they're jamming. You know, I wanna I wanna join in. You know, I wanna be a part of, and. And that's so true, you know, but that person like Jonathan, you know, has to be kind of a, the leader that lets people come in, you know, lets people join, not like, oh, no, I got it all by myself. No, let's join together. You know, let's do it together. Let's serve the Lord together. Let's grow the body of Christ together. Right. Um, you know, someone there's always people in the church that want something uh, done. They want a group or they want this or they want that. And, they, you know, when they come up to me and ask me about it and I'll always tell people, well, you know, pray about it, pray about, you, you know, yourself doing it. You know, this is, you know, you've brought it up and obviously God's put it on your heart, you know, join in, you know, take that mantle, join into what God's calling you to do. You know, I want to help you in that. I want to help you fulfill that in your life. And that's what so much of the comment corner people do, right? You guys all join in. You're all a part of the church. You guys are just as much a part as anybody else. We're all part of the body. One person's doing this. One person's doing that. It's beautiful, right? Absolutely. Hey, Paula, thanks so much for the continued prayers. So appreciate that. I know all you people praying, and we're all praying for one another, and that's great. Jesus said, those who believe in him will never die. Do you believe this? That's right. We're just going to shed that body, go through some trials with that, but 
we will be in the presence of the Lord. To be absent from the body is present with the Lord. I remember that. So I love it. Even now we're joining in together. And that's cool. Just as Israel did, you know, to fight off the Philistines. <clears throat> the way we fight our fear is through coming to Christ together. And that's great. Hey, you guys have a good day. What a good Devo. Didn't get it through the chapter, but you know what? It was a good start to this very big chapter between Saul and his son, Jonathan. Okay, have a great one, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.